franktalks.com Check out the Frank Talks relationship column currently running in the Suburban Newspaper online magazine. To read more, please visit www.thesuburban.com. FrankTalks.com Remember to sign up for the Coping with Loss newsletter and get weekly supporting messages to help you manage your bereavement, grief, and mourning. You are not alone. Sign up at FrankTalks.com now. Need help with love, sex, dating, or relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. How to date better, how to love better in 2015. And joining us in studio is Frank Kermit. He is a dating coach and contributed to a Passion with Dr. Laura Batito. You can also read him uh, weekly in The Suburban. Frank, welcome back to CJD. Thank you very much, Dan. And if you have any questions about dating, uh, Frank is an expert. Text us to 514-800 and he can answer your questions uh, about how to date better in 2015. So first, I want to start by talking, Frank, a little bit about technology because um, I tried the Tinder machine <laughs> for about two weeks uh, this, this, uh, this summer and... Um, I just had to give it up. It was too discouraging. It was too weird. And it was too um, dramatic, I guess, because, I mean, it's you're, you're making very, very superficial judgments on people and you swipe, uh, you know, the wrong way. And then that person is completely out of your life forever. It's, it's just a lot of pressure. And I, I don't feel like online dating will ever be ever be for me because it's um, it sort of takes some of the romance out of the process some of the spontaneity out of the process. It's too commercialized to to uh quantifiable i guess it's that's a very interesting question what would you describe as what's missing when dating through technology what is that a romantic element that you feel is absent because so many relationships have started through online dating now you had an experience with tinder tinder is still known primarily as the hookup app yeah but you people know, date people go on regular the, dates for on Tinder too. So well, Tinder has produced some ongoing relationships, but that's not what it's primarily known for. Okay. So yes, you're correct. It is a very shallow way. You just it's based on what you look like. Someone says yes, no, and once you get past that, you get into the idea of getting to know them better, maybe. Mm -hmm. But the fact is is that there is nothing unromantic about people saying, I want to be with somebody. Regardless of the method, whether they go to friends and family and say, hey, set me up on a blind date. Mm -hmm. Meeting through serendipity is a wonderful idea. It's a wonderful fantasy. And does that happen? Absolutely. Sometimes family moves in next door and the kids make an instant connection and they grow old together. And it's wonderful. Doesn't happen for everybody. It's luck, right? I mean... If you're relying on luck, then yeah. yes, chances are you'll end up alone. Because mm -hmm. not all of us are lucky. <laughs> yeah. If... However, you are serious and you want love in your life. It's like anything else. You set it as a goal. I want to meet somebody this year mm -hmm. and I'm going to exhaust every opportunity I can to meet the maximum number of people so that I can find somebody that is very close to what I'm looking for. So if someone is looking for love uh, in the coming year, do you prefer sort of uh, exhausting their their family, their friends, uh, trying to set them up with people? Or, or, or is online dating now your preferred option? I mean, what uh, what's, I guess, the, the number one thing that people should, uh, should focus on? The number one thing that people should focus on, figure out what it is you can really handle. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, and that's where I start dealing with people, because for some people, the problem isn't that they don't have people around them. So they don't really know what they want. They don't really know what they can handle. They think they want to date a certain type of person until they get there and they get into dating a certain type of person and realize, hey, this isn't for me. That's truly the discovery process of dating, learning about yourself. And this is why I encourage everybody to continually date until they find someone that they want to get serious in. For every relationship you enter into, every date you go on, there's something about yourself that you need to learn that's going to help you succeed in a long-term relationship down the road. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, 514-800 if you want to send us a text message if you have any questions for Frank Kermit dating coach we're talking about how to find love in 2015 um, what about in terms of uh, you know uh, I guess uh, some of the the dating companies or dating sites uh, you know uh, speed dating is really big these days um, all kinds of different spins on that uh, or dating events you know cook and date stuff like that uh, what, what kind of uh, dating events do you prefer to be very honest they're all good there isn't a dating event that I haven't liked yet. The idea is that it gets everybody out. It gets everybody mingling. Here's what I can tell you as someone who has organized various dating events. People will show up, but once they're there, their minds are closed. Mm -hmm. I have organized a variety of events, including speed dating. What shocks me is that I will eventually say, hey, you matched up with somebody, someone that you wanted to date wants to date you. And I'm calling them up and I'm letting them know this. And what they tell me is, I can't believe it. I can't believe that person actually said yes, but I can't date them. Why not? Well, it wouldn't work out anyway. I mean, they wouldn't really want to date me seriously, would they? You said yes. That person says yes. You got matched up. <coughs> They're letting you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come in there with such a close-minded attitude. Some people say, well, no, I just wanted to do this to, to practice conversation. Well, while you're practicing conversation, you got matched up with somebody and they refuse to go out on the date. Is that because, is that a signal maybe that the person is just not ready to, to have a meaningful relationship? I don't always know if the person is ready or not. I mean, unless I'm sitting down and I'm working with them one-on-one -on -one and doing some counseling, doing some coaching. What it does tell me, though, is that a lot of people are scared. Mm -hmm. They're scared to be vulnerable. They're scared to get hurt. They're scared that they might actually find something really good and it turns out that the other person is going to reject them at a later point and they want to avoid that. Mm -hmm. So they're pushing themselves only to a certain point where self-sabotaging behaviors kick in and next thing you know, they're still alone. All right, 514-800 if you want to text in your questions. Uh, we have uh, a single father, 34 years old. Uh, he says, I'm having a hard time finding someone. I'm not sure if a girls if a girls are, maybe should be saying women, but anyway, he said, I'm not sure if girls are scared of dating someone uh, with a kid. Uh, what do you think about, uh, about the challenges, not just for single fathers, but single mothers too, single parents? All right, single parents. First and foremost, the person you should be looking to date should be number one. Another parent? Uh, not necessarily no. another parent, but someone who's going to set a good example for your children. In okay. the event it gets serious, that person will be a step parent. So we're thinking about that right away, right off the bat. I mean, date right number one, bat. can this person be around my kid? Exactly. Uh, I also work as a coach for a matchmaking agency. And one of the things that I deal there is to tell people, look, you want to find the best possible match for yourself. Well, if you're already coming into this with children, don't necessarily look for who is going to turn you on the most. Look for something, someone who's going to be a really good step parent in your life. And that changes the person's perspective and criteria. So that's the first thing. Number two, are there people who feel a certain apprehension to dating single parents? The answer is yes, because they know that no matter how great you are, no matter how great the relationship is, your kids will always come first. Hmm. And people do struggle with the concept of being number two. We're talking with Frank Kermit. He is a dating and relationship coach, and we're talking about how to date better, how to love better in 2015. If you have any questions for Frank, uh, call us, 514-790-0800, or send a text message with or without your name. could be anonymous to 514-800. And uh, here we go. So um, here's a couple of questions, Frank. One, uh, what is available uh, for people around 60 years old? Uh, this is a texter uh, texting in. And, uh, and maybe while we're there, what about for those 65 plus as well? All right. Senior dating. There's two areas. There's seniors dating seniors, and then there's age gap relationships where a more senior person is dating someone who is, let's say, 10, 20, maybe even 30 years younger. What's available? It really depends on how willing you're, how, how ready you're ready to put yourself out there. Look, people are looking for companionship. Mm -hmm. What I often find the challenge for seniors is number one, a lot of them hold themselves back. That uh, speed dating example that I gave you, it was actually a senior man who had been matched up with a much younger woman who was 30 years his junior, and he was too afraid to actually take her up on the offer. Wow. So there is a huge demographic out there looking to date seniors. There's a lot of younger men who want to date older women. Is and that the kind of thing you, you encourage if both parties are, are totally okay with it? 
Consenting adults first and foremost. Are you both yeah. consenting adults? And Absolutely. there is no situation where one person happens to have a certain amount of authority over another. Or like, a uh, certain amount of or, wealth. Uh, you, you know, know what? That, those kinds of things. I, I don't worry about the wealth too no? much. And the reason I say that is because it's a question of control. Is someone being coerced okay. against their will? And as long as you can get past those kind of barriers, then everybody's a consenting adult. Okay. And if you do have a lot of wealth, you already know that some of the people trying to date you might be just after your wealth. You have to be responsible and make better choices for yourself. And sometimes people in that position use it to their advantage and they take advantage of that figuring, I know you're only dating me for my wealth, but you want to get you want to get into this so you can get your hands on whatever I have? Same deal here. So it happens. As long as everybody goes in there with eyes wide open. Here's a, I want to get to one more question from a texter, 514-800. This is from a gay man who's 41 years old uh, with kids and uh, not living in a big city. So uh, not easy to find a a gay relationship, uh, this texter says. What what kind of advice would you have for him? Okay, look, if you cannot find a partner in your perk, in your area because there just isn't the numbers available then you need to start looking at online dating maybe through agencies whether it be matchmaking websites and be willing to travel i would not get too involved into long distance relationships at least online at some point and here's the rule for you to follow if you're communicating for more than let's say a month and you really feel there's a connection there and you haven't gotten on the phone or you are on the phone occasionally, that's not enough. Be willing to travel. Find out how far you are willing to travel to meet somebody in person and also be willing to relocate if you do find someone serious. If you're not willing to relocate, then you're looking for somebody to move to your area and if you're that isolated, there's going to be a challenge there. You may have to go out to, let's say, conferences for businesses that are online and look for an entrepreneur who can basically live anywhere. So, and and you're you're talking about really an investment at this point. I mean, for for a gay man who's living in a rural area, I mean, you have to sort of put money in, uh, make sure you have a babysitter, you know, put gas in the car, drive down to the city, and it, there is a, there is a certain investment that some people have to make in dating, right? Absolutely. Look, dating is not for people who are afraid to make that kind of investment. And if you really want love in your life, you're going to have to pay the price. It's not something that happens for everyone look there are people who do get lucky in love i know it i've seen it but i also know that for the majority of people you have to work for what you want and that goes across the board in any area of life whether it's your career some people are born into families where their career is already pretty well set with a family business some people are born into situations where they have a lot of resources open to them and some people have to work for it that was my next question. What about if you don't have a lot of that, that, that cash lying around to invest in, in dating, uh, particularly if you're in a rural area? I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's pretty tough out there. I mean, it's you can't very sort of, tough. You can't spring for an expensive meal to impress a date necessarily. I mean, how do you help people who, uh, who don't have the means to, uh, to, to date or to invest in dating? I got a perfect answer for you here, right. but it's going to take some work. Okay. Set up a blog. Okay. Write about yourself. Write about the things you're interested in. Write about the struggle you have and trying to meet someone special, what it is you're looking for, what you hope to achieve. Your blog will eventually have a following. One of those followers will reach out to you and say, I would love to meet with you. Now, this is a very specific situation. We're dealing with people who don't have a lot of money. Good news, doesn't cost very much to set up a blog. Free, in most cases. Okay. You're already online. I mean, they're texting us here. So writing a little email every day to yourself, to the world, and saying, this is something I'm looking for. Make yourself known. Put yourself out there. The following you get. Look, there's going to be somebody out there who says, hey, I was reading this blog about somebody who wants to meet someone, and he's in this situation. This is what he's looking for. You, my friend, would fit in really well. Good idea. Go. All right. Good answer, Frank. Uh, another texter to 514-800 says, uh, how, to, how can I project more self-confidence on a first date? All right, when you want to project self-confidence on a first date, you have to truly appreciate everything you bring to the table. Until you have an appreciation for everything you offer, nobody else is going to feel that appreciation for you. You can't rely on the other person to make you feel good about yourself. It's funny because, you know, the, the texter is implying that there's there's some kind of trick 
to having self confidence on a date or some some little tip that that but really it really comes from within right I mean if you if you you have to within. like yourself first it comes before from within being likable but you have to understand that a lot of people are brought up in a situation where they're taught to downplay everything that they bring of value so mm. let me give you even an example okay I'm coaching with somebody and I I have them do this list of why you are the prize it's a list of thirty items that a person says I'm valuable I bring a lot into a relationship because of these things. One of the things that you should appreciate about yourself, your gender. People take their gender for granted. Are you a man? Are you a woman? Be proud of that. You're bringing that into the relationship. Second thing, your sexual orientation. You're heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual. Be proud of that. Be accepting of that. Let's see. Um, I'll ask questions like, do you have a criminal record? Now, some people will say, well, no, I don't. And they forget that is something to be very mindful of. Why? Because some people do have a criminal record. You don't be proud of that. Put that on the list. You have to see yourself as a worthy prize. Everybody focuses on all the things they say, well, someone's not going to like me because of the way I look and what I don't have. To heck with that. Focus on the things that you do bring to the table. Focus on the things you do have to offer. If you walk into any room knowing that you are one of the best possible candidates that somebody else can choose... People feel that energy. There's something intangible about it. And no matter no matter how old you are, no matter how tall, short, skinny, large, I mean, everyone focuses on the negative, right? So, you know, no matter how perfect you try to strive for, you know, you're still going to focus on the negative. So just try to maybe think about what you can bring to the table, right? Look, I deal with this every day. I am an obese man, okay? I'm a really big guy. But I'm not going to focus on the fact that, hey, I'm overweight and nobody's going to like me. I'm going to look at all the other things, the fact that I can talk, I can communicate, I can teach people how to love, I've written books, I'll do media interviews like this. These are things I'm very proud of. I like myself. That doesn't mean everybody's going to like me, but because I like me, people tend to start forgetting about my body and they focus in on the other ways that I communicate. I, I've known you for a few years now, Frank, and uh, we have a minute left, so let me ask you this. What, what, what gave you that that self-confidence you've had some dark times in your past i'm sure as everyone has what made you overcome and say you know what it's time to accentuate the positive i reached a point where i was suicidal to be honest i got mm. stood up at my prom lost my ex-fiance to my best friend wow. hung out with a girl for a couple of years who insisted could never be with me because we were too different and she ended up in a relationship with somebody who was just like me mm. and when i said why what did he do that i didn't do the answer is he pursued her i didn't and everything for me changed. I made a decision that night. I was either going to kill myself or I was going to figure this out. So I dedicated everything that I had. I took time away from school, took time away from work, and I completely focused on myself for a few years and came up with my own way of doing things. And what I learned was you better like yourself. You better be willing to go out there and do it and take chances. In the end, we're all going to end up in the grave. And you have turned it around, and you are happy, and you are loved right now. I'm uh, happily married. I am, I'm a father. It's something I've always wanted to be, and now I'm a father. I have a great little guy at home. Uh, he's the, you know, I'm, I'm completely in love with my kid. Um, I went from loser to, you know, you want to call it seducer. You want to call it, uh, you know, real man. Guru. I, uh, guru. Oh, geez, guru. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say guru because I, I think you've proven yourself on on many occasions. You're a regular on Passion here at CJAD. We'll have you back, Frank. Uh, Frank Kermit. Uh, how can people get in touch with you? FrankTalks.com. It's my website. I can meet people through Skype. I can meet people through uh, coaching over the phone and in person. FrankTalks with an S dot com. Frank, always a pleasure. Fabulous advice. Fabulous insight. And uh, and you're really inspiring people out there. So uh, everyone. Get up and just go for it. Just do it. And uh, and there's there's someone for everyone, isn't there? 2015 is your year to make <laughs> it happen. So make it happen, people. Just take some action and I'll be right there by your side along the way every step. If you need help with your relationship Frank, he's got some tips. Just go to franktalks.com. His advice is better than your mom's. He knows what you're going through. Cause Frank has been there too. So long. 
franktalks.com franktalks.com Stop being single. Remember to sign up for the Stop Being Single newsletter and get weekly tips about how to stop being single and how to start up a love life. Sign up at franktalks.com now. Check out the Frank Talks Relationships column currently running in the Suburban Newspaper Online Magazine. To read more, please visit thesuburban.com.